At the Minds of Money conference in New York, I'm with Rosa Abrantes Metz, the Managing Director at Global Economics Group. Rosa, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So can we talk firstly, um, you are a pioneer of discovering gold and silver manipulations. Um, how do you conduct your research? I have been the leading person uh, developing what I call screens, which are empirical analysis uh, to detect rigging of any type. And I started that more publicly with LIBOR, helping uncover LIBOR, and has been a, there have been a variety of cases, gold and currently U.S. Treasuries that has been in the news so much, for example, foreign exchange. Uh, and I think aside from helping uncover, uncover these cases, which obviously uh, is important, uh, I think uh, some of these successes of these tools to detect this kind of behavior uh, have made them more accepted across the board and authorities around the world have started using them uh, as well. And how do you conduct your research? What's it based on? Well, the research is a mix of empirical work, statistics, econometrics, with also an understanding of economic theory and the microstructure of the particular market at hand and where the ability to move prices is and where the incentive may right. also be. Right. And you found unusual prices in the past in gold and silver. Um, so can you give us some comments on what sort of change you've gotten from, from that discovery? Well, both gold and silver um, were set, uh, the London fixings, were set in a highly, in my view, defective way. Uh, in which a sm very small number of competitors had a huge advantage in price setting. They themselves determined the prices in a very private way. Right. Um, and prices, as we observed, uh, decreased very significantly uh -huh. for many years in both markets. These um, sparked investigations around the world, uh, lawsuits around the world, and the fixings themselves were then reformed, and that is very good news because um, manipulation starts, uh, happens more frequently when it is easy to manipulate. And by reforming the fixings and making them hard to be abused, uh, it is less likely that right. somebody's going to be able to do the same in the future. Right, and what more can regulators and institutions do to deter criminal acts? Well, I think the most important actually is to develop structures that are more immune to manipulation. Let me give you an example. We're all shocked when we learned that LIBOR had been highly rigged. We were then very shocked when we learned that foreign exchange had been highly rigged. But when we look closely at how these structures were set, they were so easy to manipulate. Right. And so it starts by uh, setting up structures that make it harder for manipulation mm -hmm. to occur. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be somebody who is willing to manipulate. But if it is hard to manipulate, then we're minimizing the chances. And then I think we need to have a very close monitoring of markets. We have right. to look at the data to see where uh, strange patterns may be. Right. And now for regular investors um, who are just in our audience, um, what about the financial world is hidden or undercovered that you can maybe uh, share with us? Unfortunately, we have learned that there has been a lot of rigging in a lot of markets. Uh, I do believe, though, that that rigging is not everywhere by everybody. There's some, sometimes not small, but some bad players. Right. But. Um, I think that overall regulators are starting to realize uh, that certain structures are um, defective and are attempting to improve them. Mm -hmm. And I think that in general, even though many small investors may have been affected by abuse, I think we should keep our faith that markets work right. uh, and that with the right rules and regulations in place and monitoring, they will in fact serve everybody well. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything that you can actually share with us um, that you're certain of, even if right now it is an uncertain uh, time uh, in society? Well, uh, there's uh, really nothing certain that one can say. I'd right. say that with respect to these kinds of conduct, things that tend to be relevant for my work, I feel encouraged by several of the reforms we have seen in the last few years, namely a lot of products getting moved to trading on exchanges rather than simply over the counter. I feel encouraged by learning that there is um, uh, a view by the current president that investment banks functions between commercial and, and investment bank should be uh, broken. Uh -huh. um, I feel encouraged to see that financial benchmarks were reformed and, and I hope that we engage from now on into more proactive reforms, not just after we uncover the ringing, 
but before so we can prevent the rigging and damages across the market. Right. Now lastly, what is the takeaway that regular investors can get from you um, so that we can better protect ourselves while we make investments in, in uh, uh, resources? Well, I think that most of the times markets function well. So yes, there is a chance that some of your trades may have been abuse, right? uh, but overall, across all markets, uh, I think that in general, investors should be confident that markets work and that prices tend to be reflected of market fundamentals. All right. Well, Rosa, thank you for your insight today. Thank you. To watch other conference videos from Small Cap Power, make sure to visit our website.